Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first stream of the perennial 2024 after a two-year break gone since 2022. We're finally back with a slightly different format and uh, a revamped tournament design. I'm Dio. I am the host of the perennial. I'm joined by Miles, one of the test players for the first map pool showcase of the tournament, the qualifier map pool showcase. Good morning. Good morning, Dio. Always excited to see Perennial back after a couple of years. Super excited to see this pool, which I've already played, but the future pools of the tournament, it's looking to be really interesting this year, and I hope you all enjoy them as much as I did. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're, we have a just slightly different pool format this year as well. Um, some of the things that I've tested in some other tournaments that I've hosted recently are making their way into the pools here for Perennial. Um, a lot of times you'll see uh, slightly different pool formats in tournaments where I'm not pooling, but uh, this one definitely slightly different from usual in terms of qualifiers. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. 
Starting off with Nomad 1, it's If You Can't Hang by Sleeping With Sirens, mapped by Quantum Vortex. Thank you, Shiv. Yep, Quantum Vortex, always gotta do it to us, Dio. He does make the real aim maps for sure. Guys just jumps. I mean, there's not much else to say here. It's just jumps. Mm -hmm. On a classic song as well. Most people probably know this from the OG set, I think by, uh, that's a Pishy Fat set, right? The OG? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. It's been a little bit since I played that, but I, I think it's a Pishy Fat set. Um, yeah, we can take a minute to talk about the overall pool format here since uh, it is just qualifiers. Um, there's not a ton going on here with the Nomad 1 in particular. But the rest of the pool will have something slightly different. Uh, in the past, I've experimented with uh, three hidden, three hard rock, three DT, as opposed to the typical, you know, two hard, two hidden, two hard rock, two DT. Um, this pool does a kind of different version of that. There's still 13 maps, um, but there's only two hidden and two hard rock. We're including two free mod in this pool. So this pool is not over after the DT pool comes around. Stick around afterwards because there are actually free mods in this qualifier pool. Um, never really made sense to me as to why pools in qualifiers for tournaments that had free mod throughout the entire tournament never themselves had free mod. Um, it is still different from just pure hidden or pure hard rock. There are a lot of teams uh, even in the US World Cup, for example, with Canada in, you know, 2021, 2022, who were very good at free mod and not that, like, ridiculously good at hidden or hard rock. So there are some teams who are just better off on free mod, um, and I think they'll be happy with the inclusion of that extra free mod pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then from a pooling perspective, like, having a free mod pool just allows you to be much more free with, like, your skill set uh, expression in the pool because like, as you mentioned, so many teams like to have very optimized free mod rosters and having that in the qualifiers really allows you to, you know, just let them be able to benefit from that before the bracket stage really starts and lets people kind of emphasize skill sets that they're better at. Like, you know, if you have an anti-mod in the free mod, it's, it's always that age old, do I go the ARA hidden or the CS 6.5 hard rock? Just having that in qualifiers, it's just a little bit better representation, I think, for seeding. Yeah, aside from the qualifiers pool having those free mods, I think this is a pretty, I think it's a pretty normal qualifiers pool. Um, there's a couple of things that are interesting about this pool, but we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, I mean, four Nomads, I think people are mostly used to seeing five, question mark? I mean, usually it's four, two, 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 right? Like, so it's, uh, I think, pretty normal for four, mm -hmm. uh, four Nomad, four Nomads in qualifiers, excuse me. So uh, with this pool for format, you could definitely make an argument for including a fifth no mod. Um, but with how this pool turned out, I, I don't really think we needed that fifth no mod. And I think uh, we'll be just fine with how things are in this pool. Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, when it comes to skill set representation, which is probably the most important thing in a qualifiers pool, uh, the slots that we do have definitely are able to represent pretty much most skill sets you expect to see in a tournament, so should be pretty accurate seeding results to come out of this one. All right, now before we uh, move on to the next one, I am just going to take one second uh, to uh, change out some of the settings here on the broadcast, uh, stuff like the skin, for example, or the uh, progress wheel. So I'm just going to do that real quick and then get on to the next replay. All right, moving on to the next one is going to be Nomad 2. 
Throwback to the perennial 2021, except uh, it's not quite the same map. Gravesinger makes its way back into a perennial pool for the second time in four years. This time mapped by Riot1133. And uh, a little less ridiculous on the flow aim as compared to the Fisky version from 2021's Grand Finals pool. Yeah, this one, very high star rating. I think it's the third highest star rating in the pool behind a couple of the DTs, which I think is pretty expected for Nomad 2. But yeah, this song is something that a lot of OSU players are probably familiar with. And there's a lot of very iconic maps of this song already. I know one by It's Winter. And it's just a great song to map streams to, as you can see. Yeah, I think the big thing for this is uh, a lot of a lot of players have gotten much more comfortable with this type of uh, Axel D cell kind of high spacing with uh, mid range BPM streams. Right, 200 for most players and the open rank level is going to be pretty accessible. Um, that said, this is a pretty high star rating pool compared to the first round of the tournament. So uh, if some of your players start chain missing on this section or on the one near the end of the map as well. I wouldn't feel too bad. Uh, these uh, these maps are going to be relatively hard compared to group stage. Group stage is going to go down quite a bit to only a 6.75 star uh, target with the Nomad 1. For context, Nomad 1 here is nearly 7.5 stars. Um, and that's because the top 8 seeds do not have to play group stages. So we're pulling group stages for seeds 9 through 24 rather than uh, accounting for the top seeds in the tournament. And this Nomad 2, it isn't really exclusive between testing uh, Flow Aim and Stamina, like you sometimes see with some earlier stage Nomad 2s or Qualifiers Nomad 2s. There's a lot of long streams in this map, and we already just got through the first chorus, and you're seeing, even during this bridge section, the streams don't really let up. So it's one where I think, where Nomad 2s are usually seen to be some of the highest average scoring maps in the pool. I think this one could really catch out people who aren't necessarily like Nomad 2 specialists who farm this type of thing in single player. Stamina check Nomad 2s are always a lot lower average score than your kind of blowing check Nomad 2s. Uh, the fact that this map does both definitely means players are going to struggle on this one. Um, remember back, I think, NAT 2022? Question mark? I don't know. Um, but there's uh, just a pure stamina 200 BPM map as Nomad 2, and everybody is dropping 100k, so... Um, I'm not expecting quite that level of uh, of players performing poorly on this, but definitely I don't expect this to be uh, a, a usually high-scoring Nomad 2. Mm -hmm, yeah, and here comes that brutal end section that's so iconic. The guitar solo right at the end of the song. Yeah. So satisfying to hit that. So satisfying to hit. Um, the Fisky version definitely little went a little crazy on the spacing, but uh, picked a great song for that map in 2021. Glad to bring this back. And now on to Nomad 3. Not exactly a typical alt map. This is sort of alt tech hybrid here for the Nomad 3 in this pool. And, you know, the optics with having four Nomads really supports having kind of an alt tech hybrid in this slot because, you know, usually in a typical slot pool, Nomad 3 alt, Nomad 4 tech, but being a slot down on it really supports the idea of meshing them into the slot. And this type of map is very common, very fun to play, very easy to find. So definitely still something that I'd love to see represented in a Qual's pool. Yeah, I've been playing around with uh, alt tech maps in qualifier pools uh, for a, a long while, actually, since I think 2021 with uh, Dio's Bad Tournament, um, where I just kind of went balls to the wall experimenting with everything possible. But um, a lot of the times when I had these sort of alt tech hybrids in the Nomad pool, they were very, very popular. 
Um, and I think they've taken off recently with uh, slot pooling being somewhat moved away from uh, because of that. Players really, I think, tend to enjoy this type of map in Nomad much more so than in uh, Hard Rock or Free Mod, for example. Usually you would see something like this in Hidden in a typical slot pool, which is why I don't mention that mod. But uh, I think the added level of control with Nomad makes it very, very satisfying to play these sorts of maps. Yeah, this is the type of map that, honestly, it's almost a throwback to like old Akali tech maps that used to play in multi back in pre-2020 when that was the majority of the tech picks that you'd see in tournaments anyway. So a little bit of a throwback when it comes to style with a lot of this like flow aim control kind of deal. But the aim control is definitely a lot more intense than the old Akali maps more, which were I was kind of just... <laughs> Yeah, you were about to flame me for that, right? No, 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 I wasn't even laughing about that. I was laughing at Nanoia in chat. Why are there metal pipe sounds? There's metal pipe hit sounds in this map. If you play with it's custom so hit sounds, you get metal pipe hit sounds playing in the background. That is an intentional hit sound from the mapper. Uh, very, very funny. If anyone plays with custom hit sounds, please, please live stream your qualifiers. If anybody plays with custom hit sounds, no, you sh you have to play with custom hits, custom hit sounds, or your score doesn't count. Uh, real, real on this map. Okay, on to the Nomad Four. As we had alt tech for the Nomad Three, so we have reading for the Nomad Four. Low AR by half slashed, uh, half slashed, and Zune name a more iconic duo. I love Toho. Okay, memes aside, this map, lots of very difficult overlaps and wiggle patterns. You have kind of that half slash, very iconic uh, aim control alt patterns mixed with the low AR. It's, makes for a really unique challenge. This map is usually pooled, I think, outside of Nomad, like, seen it more often as like a low AR pick in Hidden or I think it's a very good free mod map because even though I think it's very HR leaning, like it's still so brutal with the aim control on the hard rock that it offers unique challenges on every mod. Yeah, this is a really brutal map. Um, this is on the hard side for the pool, despite being no mod reading. So very, very tricky. Um, of course, we will have a different style of reading map for the AR8 hidden. Um, and this pool format allows us to do this kind of interesting thing, right? Um, we have a low AR hidden and a low AR no mod. Uh, so free mod actually will not have an anti mod pick. It's going to be something different in that free mod pool. Um, so allows us a, a lot more diversity in the rest of the pool because of that. Um, pretty happy with how the formatting turned out there, and very happy with this pick because uh, in hidden this map is like an eight star sort of pick, right? This would just would not work in qualifiers here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so brutal on hidden, and you know it also kind of forces reading into more of the map pool because if you run free mod in qualifiers and then you have anti mod in the free mod then it's only really one reading map in the pool and you know lots of times uh your non-tapping players have to suffer with like multiple tapping picks so it just feels a little more fair to have like a force two force reading picks if you're gonna have multiple force like speed picks like we do in the 2dt format or the 3dt format yeah Yeah, I will say I think this is probably the single lowest scoring map in the pool. Um, just because, A, it's balanced around tournament players being about as good on this as on other maps in the pool. Um, and B, it's forced low AR for every single player in the tournament. And it's a very, very difficult style of that forced low AR. So I think this is definitely the lowest scoring map in the pool by average score. I don't think it's unbalanced because of that. I think this is just going to be hard for a lot of players who aren't super accustomed to this style of low AR um, or to playing very hard low AR maps, right? A lot of players, myself included, can kind of fake our way through um, a lot of easier low AR maps, but uh, not, not when they're this hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, there's also like just the fact how everyone is so much more like so much more trained on the mechanics maps and the tech maps yeah. because there's more of there's more intent uh, there's more like of a reason to play those skill sets but not a lot of people really pushing reading so this is just like it's scaled in my opinion as far as the mechanics but like people just don't play this type of map as much so it's gonna get lower scores 
Yep. Uh, speaking of tech that people often play more, we have a tech hidden one here, Heracles by you, uh, map by Enipoyo. This is an interesting map. Uh, it is a contest winner, uh, OMC 8, I believe, winner. Yeah, OMC 8 winner, um, and a very, very tricky map broken up into lots of sections between these kind of overlaps, a lot of symmetry at work in the map, uh, some very, very difficult slider sections in the middle, and then more of kind of a flowing focus near the end of the map. There's another word I like to use for this kind of tech, but it might be used in a, in a further map in the pool, actually, so I'm not going to say it. Okay, I lied. I think my memory is just lying to me because this is, is most lying? certainly not mech tech. Yeah, this is definitely not sliders. mech tech, bro. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, there's mm. definitely parts of this that feel mech techy, like the ending, for example, is uh, very flowing focused, not as much of a heavy slider focus as this part. Um, but this map is uh, far more, far more pure tech focused than uh, a lot of the other tech picks that you'll see in Hidden, oftentimes. Um, and that's obviously because we don't have a pure tech pick in the Nomad Pool, right? That's yeah, entirely because of that. Mm -hmm. But this map also does have a few things that make the difficulty unique on Hidden. Like you see a few perfect stacks in this map that make it uniquely difficult on Hidden. And then also some of the flow aim in this map could be amplified in difficulty by Hidden depending on how you feel on that as a player. I will say this one was kind of a mixed bag in terms of playtester feedback. Um, some playtesters really like this map, and some playtesters really dislike this map and dislike playing it. Um, so I expect this to be a pretty uh, divisive pick among the players. I think there is an audience for this kind of map, but not everybody is going to enjoy playing this. And that's okay. Not everybody has to enjoy every map. I definitely don't enjoy every map in every tournament I play. Uh, but this this will certainly be a, a more divisive pick among players. Mm, yeah, I'd agree with that. Because, mostly because of some of the aspects I said earlier. Like, people who aren't necessarily, like, very uh, experienced hidden tourney players are probably not going to get a super great score on a map like this. Like, maybe your all-rounders who are less preference towards hidden. Might get a poor score on this. Yeah. All right, and now we have the uh, less interesting low AR pick. Despair Refrain by Estrus, mapped by Lasse. This is kind of your awkward aim low AR pick. Um, I think Shiv put it best. This is basically if somebody took a normal Lasse map and threw AR8 on it. Um, I'm not sure exactly if this was mapped for low uh, AR8. Obviously it was, but... Uh, it definitely does feel more like a, a pretty standard loss in map with that low AR. Definitely does still do some more interesting things with it. The uh, awkward aim obviously makes it a lot more difficult on AR8. A uh, couple of overlapping patterns, but nothing crazy like we saw in the Nomad 4. Yeah, this one is definitely for the players who have played a lot of tournament low AR HD over the years <laughs> because, yeah. like... If you played tournaments between 2019 and 2023, this slot was basically permanently awkward aim, low AR hidden, and or a map that had some kind of awkward aim aspect in the difficulty, and this map is mostly just that. And I mean, you know, it functions as a low AR, more simple pick compared to the Nomad 4, and also a more aim-related pick in the hidden pool, when the hidden one is mostly tech. So, kind of fulfills those two functions from a map pooling context. I don't even count this as an aim map, really, but it, it, it kind of is just because it, it's it's an aim map, but it's also AR8 hidden. It's very accessible reading, right? Um, if you don't have the requisite AR8 hidden reading to play this, then it's going to feel like impossible to read to you. Uh, but if you do have the requisite reading, this is just an aim map. Yeah, for sure.
You know, there are a few streams in this map too, so... Gotta be able to have that, uh, you know, that quick change between snap aim and flow aim for the few streams in the map too. That's one underrated difficulty aspect of a lot of uh, AR8 hidden picks is that if it's all snap aim the whole time, then you have your reading and your, like, grips on your mouse or your tablet, like, acquainted to that. But then once that one flow aim section shows up, it could really catch you by surprise. I've seen a lot of uh, maps like that. I think the qualifiers hidden to in the US World Cup was kind of similar, right? A lot of these kind of back and forth awkward aim jump patterns, and then uh, a couple of flow aimy streams kind of out of nowhere in the map. Uh, they obviously make sense for the song, but from a player's standpoint, it's a pretty jarring switch between those two different styles. Mm, and that's what... Okay, I was about to say that's what makes this different than a map like Maze of Vapor, but Maze of Vapor has streams <laughs> too, and everybody everybody missed on them too, so... Yeah. Okay. This is all according to the script. Yeah, don't miss on that stream. Yeah, especially don't get a bunch of 50s alongside that miss, because... <laughs> One, one thing about Awkward Aim low AR Hiddens is it's like, compared especially to the Nomad 4, like, most people who are able to read this should be getting very good act. Like, 99.40 on our replayer, like, most of the act drops are going to be coming from your misses, or at least be related to your miss. Like, if you miss on the stream and then you get a bunch of 50s alongside it, it's not really going to be you falling off rhythm, because this is a very simple BPM. Yeah, it's 195, so something that all high-level tournament players should be relatively comfortable with. All right, and that'll do it for the Hidden Pool. Thank you to uh, Konkun Kinakon for the last few replays in a row, by the way. Nomad 4, Hidden 1, Hidden 2, all in a row by Konkun Kinakon. Uh, carried the sort of reading picks in the pool. And now onto the Hard Rocks. With another Kinakon replay, actually. It's a precision CS 6.5 version of Deus Ex Machina, mapped by Felozzi. A little lower in terms of the star rating than you might expect for this sort of pool, only down at 7.3 stars. Um, but a, with the lower BPM down at 180 BPM, the spacing on these jumps at CS 6.5 is absolutely massive. Mm -hmm. And you could almost argue that this fulfills like a similar like niche as the Hidden 2 does, where like, yeah, this is your specialty pick in the HR pool, it's precision, but it's also very much an aim map. And it's also a pretty long one as well. So you could almost like say it's an HR1 if it has precision if you want to talk in a slot lingo. But yeah, a lot of the difficulty on this is going to be condensed to the chorus. There's these really difficult square jumps that you have before every chorus. And that's where I had most of my misses when I was playtesting. You're about to see the first one here. Oh, so brutal. This is, a, this is a type of map, these kind of precision aim maps, that I've really liked for a long time. Um, it's a little boring, sure. It's not as interesting as your uh, kind of aim control precision maps, but I've always found those to be so much easier and so much more accessible uh, than these kind of pure aim maps on CS 6.5. And in a two hard rock pool, I feel like doing it this way allows you uh, to just better test the precision. You don't have to worry about, you know, finding something that fits the rest of the pool and is also that higher circle size. Um, and besides that, these awkward jumps and super high spacing is really, really tough on that higher circle size anyway. So uh, still does a very good job of testing precision, which is what it's meant to do in the slot.
Okay, my net just died for a sec. Am I back? You are back. Welcome. All right, we are so back. Okay. All, all good. I was I talking anyway, so it worked out. All right. Awesome. So another thing I really like about having, you know, more conventional aim or stream maps in the precision slot is that there's just so much of a prevalence of uh, of aim control in some of these higher star map pools. Like you see aim control injected into just about every reading pick, just about every tech pick. And there's such an abundance of these, like, you know, more conventional stream and aim maps in, like, I guess the mm -hmm. pool of potential precision picks that it really does balance out some map pools by having a map in the precision pool be a lot more conventional. And especially looking back at some of the recent uh, tech and reading maps we've seen in this map pool, I think it fulfills the function of just another like conventional aim map really well when put in this qualifier pool's context. Oh yeah, funny, funny wiggle streams at the end though, so. You do have a little bit of aim control, but it's the last 50 nodes, so. Yeah, do watch out for those. Um, but yeah, as you said, uh, I, I think it's very, very good to have some of these more uh, stock standard sorts of maps to contrast with stuff like this. Anti-safety zone by Miyuke, uh, Lolly and Ducky's Hell Extra. Can't remember if this was originally going to be an OWC map that was uh, scrapped or something, but uh, Chillier has uh, put his one map into the pool this week, and it's going to be this one. Uh, and it's a banger. It's uh, an interesting tech mechanics hybrid with a big one-third section filled with bursts and jumps at 255 BPM. I love flow tech, I love aim control flow tech, and I love this map, but we scrapped it from OWC last year for some reason, and something in my gut says that there's going to be a little bit of a spike coming up, but yeah, this map is really cool. Like, you can just see some of these bursts. It, it really is a massive package of a map. Like, you had some of those slow aim focus streams earlier with some of the aim control cuts. You have these bursts here with the finger control, the one-third slowdown. Like, just overall a big package of a map. It almost functions as a tiebreaker-esque sort of map, right? You have these kind of basic mechanics with the high spacing jumps and high speed bursts at 255. And then you have the low aim, the tech sliders, the finger control in the slower sections of the map as well. Um, so kind of a mini tiebreaker in the hard rock pool here. And I think that's really good for testing overall how good somebody is on hard rock. If you can play kind of everything all together at once, um, then you, you're you definitely a very, very solid hard rock player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we've, we've gone through a few very specialist focus maps but this one I think is really gonna be one where the all-rounders kind of shine because there's just so many skill sets you have to contend with. If you're a very specialized player, you're probably not gonna have a great time on this one. But people who people who play a lot of this type of stuff, I think are gonna be happy to see this map in the pool. So we do see a little bit of a drop off in difficulty in this final quarter where it's mostly focused on the flow aim there in that last chorus before we get to this second finger control section after the really difficult speed section, finger control section. So I think that's going to be the place where people are going to be expected to hold combo the most. Yeah, absolutely. And now with the hard rock pool out of the way, thanks to Kanakon and Hanbei for the replays there. Go on to the DT pool. Three DTs in this pool, so five maps left to go. Starting off with Catch It. Uh, if No Mod 4 is the lowest scoring average score map, I think this is actually the hardest map in the pool. High approach rate, awkward aim. I mean, it's a handsome map, so you know it's going to be pretty awkward. Oh my god, I forgot what this song was. This is, uh... This song, I, I hate this song, but the map is so good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for doing this. The guy singing the lyrics is not lying here. This song will get stuck in your head if you practice this too much, so... I'm gonna have to warn you against that. And this is uh, kind of serving to contrast with, you know, the Nomad one, the Hard Rock one are very, very stock standard aim maps, right? There's nothing special going on in the Nomad one. And aside from the Hard Rock one being CS 6.5, it's just basic aim. There's not much going on there either until the very end of the map. 
Um, so something like this that is a lot more awkward, lots of wide angle jumps, especially on DT with the AR 10.3, is uh, a big contrast with those other two maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, 10.3 is something a lot of players are comfortable on, lots of players or lots of teams love bringing on like people who are very specialized in high AR and DT. So I agree with you thinking, even if this is the hardest map, it's gonna be one where you're probably gonna see higher scores in the Nomad 4. Yeah, one thing I did like about this pick when just looking for a, a DT aim pick, I remembered back in 2022, um, when we pulled uh, Kuni Naru, and I got feedback from Monk the Dawn, uh, that the kind of slider jump emphasis in that map was really good for a DT1 because it forced you to actually read. So many DT1s don't have any stacks. You saw perfect overlap stacks there. You see a lot of perfect stack uh, slider jumps in this map as well with various timing depending on the song. You actually have to read this. You can't just fling your cursor around the screen. Um, and that's kind of the point of a DT1, right? Especially this is the only high AR map in the pool. So I wanted to make sure this was something that actually tested that high approach rate reading uh, in addition to having that kind of awkward aim strain. And this map just fit that perfectly. Mm -hmm. Very unique kind of pick. All right. Thank you to Humbay for the replay once again. And now on to DT2. Another throwback song. If you remember Erebus from 2021, uh, by far the hardest map in the quarterfinals pool there in Hidden. Uh, redone here by Adapir as a DT pick in qualifiers in 2024. Replay definitely by Nemroz and not by anybody else on the playtesting team. Definitely. Love me some speed. But this one, I think, not necessarily too focused on the raw speed, more so on the stamina and the finger control. It's a bunch of long streams, and it's a pretty accessible BPM, right? Uh, it's only 240 BPM, so a lot of players will be comfortable on the BPM. Uh, but the flowing, the length of the streams, the stop-and-go patterns, where if you over-tap a single time, you break because of the 1-1 one -one gap, uh, make this a little bit more difficult than I think uh, it appears at first glance. This is still pretty high star rating as well. Uh, Ghost of Memory says 7.19 stars, but... Uh, on new star rating, this is 7.57 stars, and of course, Catch It was 7.7 .7 stars. So, uh, a lot of these DT picks, a little bit higher star rating than they might appear at first glance. And this ending with this flow aim is absolutely ridiculous. So difficult here near the end of the map. Uh, if you can make it there with your full combo intact, then uh, you're probably still one of the best scores of the weekend. Mm, but I do think that accuracies on this are probably going to be pretty good. Because 240, just a comfort BPM for any tournament DT players. All right, and now on to DT3, last speed map in the pool. The Insert Coin by Andy Gillian, mapped by Silvari. 270 Shred. There's basically no aim on this. A couple of jumps here and there, but uh, you'll notice the spacing on these is quite low, and most of them are, if not comfortable angle or angles, then uh, very, very low spacing, uh, just old style flow aim jumps like this. Mm -hmm, yeah, this is probably the answer to Nomad 4 when it comes to being a very specialized pick. This one is for the shredders. If you're missing on anything other than the bursts on this, then uh, you're playing the map wrong. And oh you say that and... Uh, our replayer there just missed on a jump. Sorry, Nemraz. <laughs> I sincerely apologize. Uh, I'll rescind my statement immediately. Uh, you are valid if you break on not the burst. Uh, real talk, though, when you have to focus on the speed so much, it is very easy to miss aim something. Um, so, of course, we tried to find something with uh, as little of that aim as possible, but uh, unfortunately, this is an aim game, so you do still have to maintain some level of control over your aim hand.
as Nemroz gets the most unfortunate combo breaks <laughs> oh known my to God, man. He's missed I, I really hope whoever's playing this qualifier do not miss on what Nemroz is missing on because he is getting through these bursts pretty much scot free. He's still got almost 99 act despite the multiple misses just because uh, just because his act on the burst is so good. But uh, yeah, unfortunate on the jumps and uh, sliders there, but. This pick does the job, right? This is just pure speed. And with that, we definitely have enough speed in the pool, right? You get the partial speed in Hard Rock 2. You get the DT stamina and the uh, DT pure speed in DT 2 and 3, respectively. Mm -hmm. And then you also combine the stamina aspect of the Nomad 2. And you have a very wide range of maps for tapping players to get good scores on. But it's time for the free mod pool. On to the free mods. Starting with free mod one, Chojo no Maiso by Plastic to Onanoko, mapped by Snow Note, the AR9 difficulty for your free mod one aim pick. Snow Note, the goat. He is your favorite low AR, low AR. He's your favorite AR9 mapper's favorite AR9 mapper. Oh, man, Snow, Snow Note maps are just timeless, right? Uh, this map does pure high BPM density aim very, very well and still holds up despite being one of the oldest maps in the pool. So I'm just very happy with overall how this, uh, how this map works with the rest of the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this type of map is just perfect for free mod. It offers a really difficult dense aim challenge for your Nomad and Hidden players, but then on the, the Hard Rock, it's still very linear, still very awkward jumps. Definitely gonna be straining your aim more, so just really depends on your optics as a player. Do you prefer that more difficult aim challenge on your comfortable AR-10, or do you want a more density-focused map on the uh, Nomad or the Hidden? This map, of course, was balanced around that. I believe with Hard Rock, this is something like 7.6 stars or so. Uh, but with that higher BPM, once again, should feel still doable for a lot of players. And this map breaks a little bit of stigma, in my opinion. A lot of people don't really practice aim maps too much. But this is the type of aim map that you really need to practice because... Those back and forth sections, this the way this song is just structured, it's not really very sight read friendly, especially if you're going for a mod. No, definitely not. It's uh, a very, very tricky aim map, all things considered. So one you are going to want to practice, even if uh, you are a good aim player, just so that you get the rhythms down and you know what to expect from the song. And with that, onto the last map in the qualifiers pool, free mod two. The one thing we haven't had so far, a normal alt map to be uh, Byoshin Zenkai Girl by Mio Yamazaki, mapped by Spartan. Hard Rock on this replay by Hanbei. This is your tournament slot pool classic Nomad 3, your awkward aim alt pick. And everyone here who's played a tournament, probably between 2021 and 2023, has seen this because this map was extremely popular in tournaments. And it's returning in the free mod pool, which is something I really like to see with a map like this because it offers kind of similar optics to the last map with mods where you have more strenuous aim sections on the hard rock, a little bit higher difficulty to act, a little bit more aim control, but then also just reading this type of aim on hidden is a lot more difficult than you'd expect at first. That said, this map is also easier when modded than the previous pick. Last map with CS 4.3 and AR 9. This map is CS 3.6 and AR 9.5. So much more accessible with the mods, um, but still something that I think people are just gonna wanna know mod most of the time, right? CS 3.6, AR 9.5 is extremely comfortable difficulty settings for the vast majority of players. So why bother modding when you don't have to? Uh, of course, in previous years of the Perennial, we've forced mod on every single player during free mod picks 
This year, that is not the case. If you bothered to read the website info section, which I'm betting 95% of people didn't, uh, you'd know that you no longer need four players for each free mod. You only need two players on free mod, uh, similar to the Osworld Cup. So, uh, people who were forming teams based around the old rules, uh, unlucky, I suppose. But, uh, this year gonna be a little bit more lenient on the mods, so I'm expecting pretty much two no mod on this map every single time. The previous one, I can definitely see some comfort, uh, comfort hard rocks coming out, though. Yeah, and you know, this map was in every tournament as a Nomad 3 a while ago, so people are more knowledge to this map on uh, on the Nomad. So you're probably not going to need to learn too much. Yeah, this is the final map of the qualifiers pool. Uh, overall, very happy with uh, how the qualifiers pool turned out here. Um, you have Nomad 1, Nomad 2 for mechanics, uh, Hard Rock 1 for mechanics, DT1, DT2, DT3 for mechanics, um, and then kind of Free Mod 1, kind of Hard Rock 2. I don't know if I really count those. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do with pools in the perennial this year is focus a little bit more on those general mechanics, make it a little bit more accessible for non-tournament players. I feel like so many big tournaments nowadays, and so many tournaments in general, have a ton of aim control, um, especially with how slot pooling has kind of gone away, how people are mixing up slots more uh, and changing up what it means to you know, make a tournament map pool. Um, so I'm very happy with uh, the amount of purer mechanics maps in the pool, as well as the amount of mixed mechanics, right? With the DT1, the Fremod 1, the Hard Rock 2, um, still keeping it interesting and still having uh, quite a lot of those more gimmicky maps like the uh, Nomad 3 through Hidden 2, partially the Hard Rock 2, uh, and partially the Fremod 1, and of course the stream. So mm -hmm. pool is very balanced. Uh, pretty happy with how Qualifiers Pool turned out. That'll be on the website and the spreadsheet in just a moment. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the tier list stream. We'll get started with that shortly. We're going to have to take about a five-minute break or so uh, just to get ready for uh, that stream. Uh, in the meantime, thank you all for watching, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with that tier list stream. And thanks for Miles. Uh, thanks to Miles for casting with me also.
Eyeglasses approve this message. Is this thing on right now? Roundtable LA 2023. I can't hear you. <laughs> All right, hello okay. everyone, and welcome back to the perennial opening stream. We're here for tier list predictions with uh, the Marsh, Fiery, and Vordy. Good morning. The Marsh, you baited me. You baited me into saying something because you said something before Dio unmuted. Did not. How dare yeah, you? Yeah, you did. That's just so <laughs> over. Everything is ruined. Everything's ruined, man. It's over. Unlucky. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. All right. Well, uh, we've taken a two-year break, and we've got uh, an interesting new rule for the perennial this year that all of the teams have to be within a specific region, either the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, or Asia, Australia, and Oceania. So all of the teams that you see here are essentially region-locked within their own team. 
uh, just for scheduling purposes, time zone purposes, and uh, hopefully for a more competitive tournament, though uh, some of the teams are definitely still stronger than others. Uh, so we're going to be going through the teams and just talking about our opinions about how well they will do overall. Uh, going down the list alphabetically, starting with Ah. All right, um, I might start with this one just because you know, it's mostly Australian, so i got to wrap the Australian pride. Um, I think this is definitely going to be a team that I, I think overperforms their ranking relative to the other teams. Mostly because you have some... Like landmines, like Extremities is insanely good for his rank. You have O slash as well as underranked JGLF. Um, really good reading players. Uh, you have some good mechanics as well. That's also not Zoomer, by the way. That's a meal bus. Uh, don't be, be baited by the name. And uh, you have some good mechanics as well. I think late stage speed is going to be a problem. I think reading is good. Um, I think you have a lot of aim control players as well. But uh, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty good team. I'm going to say something like. I'll say top 12 for now, just because I know how good some of the later stage teams are going to be, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think, you know, they're number 19 by average rank, but I think they're just better than that because a lot of the lower rank players, especially Extremities uh, and JGLF, O Slash, right, are all actually very good. Of course, JGLF and O Slash were on the OWC team for Australia. Um, so I think I can mostly agree with top 12, actually, for this team. I'm going to go one lower, I think, top 16. Pro I, I wouldn't be surprised to see top 12 personally, but I think top 16 is probably the more reasonable one here for me to go for, at the very least, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I'll, yeah, I think I'll lean into that top 16 as well. Um, I think there's quite a few unknowns, um, and I don't want to put all my eggs in, in one basket, so to speak, just yet. But I definitely just, think it really depends that. on how the pool scales, I think. That's it, yeah, yeah. So for now, uh, overall, we'll put them top 16. If we have a team that we are split 50-50 on, we'll round down based on the average, um, just to kind of keep it open for teams in the future. And now on to um, APAC Radiant, the number one team wow. by rank seeding. And uh, not just number one by rank, but also Cracked, Enri, a secret box, Kamenchik, worst HR player, Flying Tuna, Restia, uh, that is, I think, real Hyok. I'm going to double check yes. that. And Allegrissimo. Um, yeah, that is the real Hyok 24, uh, 2044. Um, yeah, Fiery and DNQ, you have uh, any, anything to say about this one? They will not show up. They, <laughs> they will, will not, not show, show up, up to their qualifier. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, I mean, that could happen, technically. Um, but I, I, I think. No, but no, realistically speaking, like, top three is almost guaranteed for these guys, I think. I. Obviously, first, I think, is probably what most people would put them in. I'm not too sure about first place with some of the other teams that we'll be seeing necessarily, but they pretty much are shoo-in for top three at the very least. Yeah, I think I agree with top three at least for this team. I think there's a couple of other teams around, specifically uh, like one from Europe and one or two from North America, South America that would compete for that, but uh, I, I think at the very least they're going to be in the conversation for top three, if not top one overall in the tournament. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put them top one. I think, um, I mean, looking, the only teams I really looked into were the, you know, top four or five by ranking, um, but I think this is the most complete team. I think they are unmatched on aim control and reading. I don't think any team is beating them on that skill set. I think they have a fantastic speed roster with uh, like Enri, Box, Command Chick, Restia. They have insane hard rock players like you know, Allegrissimo can be a slum for the hard rock. I think there's a few skill sets where they're unmatched on. I think speed, they're matched by some teams or maybe outcompeted a bit, but they can put up a fight. And I don't think there's a single skill set where they're missing a fourth, which some of the teams do have that problem. So I'm gonna put in first. Yeah, I've, I've also gone for first. Um... I just I have a feeling that I'm looking at some of their their members that are going to make up their core roster and they're on really good form at the moment, especially coming out of like some of the three digit and four digit World Cups we've seen. Um, I just think that this team is it, we already expect them to go very very far, so why not just expect them to go all the way? Okay, so we're going to average it out to top three or now as I. Uh... 
have to type something in on on my uh, on my VS code here real quick. Okay, and uh, go ahead and average them out into top three for now. Uh, we'll have a couple of other teams, I think, in the conversation for top three, and we can adjust from there, but uh, definitely they're also a team that I think could absolutely win it, and uh, depending on the conversation around some other teams, we'll maybe have to adjust them up later. On to the next one. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, which... Thank you, Jojo, for teaching me how to say that. Uh, Rundi, Zeitfrost, Ophiz, Shari Tori, Anthony W, Dash Lion, Himejoshi, formerly known as Rosoa, and Nightly Wind. Uh, Dash Lion, formerly known as Lionheart1306. Um, not a player I'm super familiar with, but the rest of these players definitely all very strong, and I think similarly uh, to Ah earlier, are probably going to do pretty well. Uh, even with a lot of these players being slightly lower ranks, specifically Anthony W is far better than his uh, Bancho rank su suggests. You could say that about literally like half of these players. To be yeah, fair. Shari Tori also, <laughs> Rosoa also. I don't know, man. Oaf is also. Oaf is an ODBC player. Um, I think I similarly put them top 12. Like, I think this is just a very, very strong team. And I don't see a lot of skill sets that they're going to struggle with in either group stages or in round of 16 and quarterfinals, uh, which means I, I think they get through to semifinals at the very least. Um, that said, semifinals is a hard pool. Semis and onward, you're getting close to eight stars. Semis is 7.75 stars. And I question the scaling on a lot of these members a little bit. Um, not necessarily on players like Rundi, Zeitfrost, Shari, Tori, um, but on a lot of the other members, I think I question, you know, how well they're going to be able to do when you hit that near eight star limit in semifinals and onwards. I pretty much agree with everything you said there. I think top 12 is realistic, all things considered. These players are more than capable of playing at high star rating pools, but with the, some of the teams that are in this tournament, I don't think they would get top six necessarily. So I think top 12 is a fair assessment. I think for me, I'm going to put top 16 just because of that scaling issue you did mention. I think the difference between this team and something like Ah is Ah at least has, you know, I think Zintex and Sayo, uh, who late stage on mechanics are going to perform really well, and then you also have the reading players who perform really well. I do think for some of the more mechanically intensive maps, uh, other than a few pillars you mentioned, I don't know if they're going to scale as well. I'll put top 16 for now, but could yeah. change depending on what teams uh, float up here. And uh, one thing to note, uh, both for Vordy and for the viewers at home. Um, the format for the tournament this year is top 32 qualify out of qualifiers. Uh, the top eight in qualifiers get a buy out of a group stage with seeds 9 through 24. And only the top seed in each group gets through into top 16, where you have round of 16 and quarterfinals being played in the same weekend on the same pool at a 7.25 star pool. So... Uh, if a team goes top 16, that means they make it out of group stages, but they get O2'd in round of 16 and quarterfinals. So that's the that's the scenario for being top 16 specifically. Top 12, you win at least one match in uh, round of 16 and quarterfinals. All right, on to the next team up. It's going to be Baffled. Baffled with... Uh, a few lower rank players here and only six players on the roster. The minimum amount, uh, Sekiri, TDG1, GD Venom, Lil Salad, Anu, and Timo Instalock. Um, I think unfortunately for a team with uh, quite a few low rank players, it's going to be very hard to qualify. Just because the qualifiers pool itself is seven and a half stars. That's harder than either group stage or round of 16 and quarterfinals. Uh, it's a very unforgiving qualifiers pool. So I think uh, a lot of troubles await some of those lower ranked teams in the qualifiers pool. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I think uh, we we wish them all the best with the with the qualifiers. But like you said, if you when you look at the star rating of the pool, it's going to be a a tough climb. But to make it through the qualifiers, they haven't got to beat that many teams. So there is the chance that you know an insane performance could help them swing through. But again. When you're not, when you don't have the full, full man roster, it's 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 always tough to go into a qualifier. Yeah, there's only so many teams as well, right? There's uh, 
a good 39 teams, so uh, definitely chances that uh, some of the teams don't show up and uh, teams that normally would not qualify if all 39 teams played do make it out, but I think this is uh, one of the teams that if everybody plays, you expect not to qualify. On to the next one. Uh, Ballers will ball with a full North and South America roster, uh, lights out water, Bay Susie, also known as Eddie from Canada, uh, Easy Chalk, Rico, Julian Kala, Raikai, and Woey. I think this roster is pretty solid personally. Um, I do think they may struggle in terms of uh, the round of 16 and quarterfinals against some of the better teams, but I think in group stages, they should do pretty well. I don't expect them to qualify in top eight. I do expect them to qualify, you know, somewhere in the top 32, but not top eight. Um, so I think for this team, I would go top 16. Um, I think in the lower stages, especially with players like Eddie and Water and Raikai, they have a lot of players who are very, very good on the uh, sub seven star group stage pool, but um, maybe we'll start to struggle against some of the better teams in round 16 and quarterfinals. Yeah, I agree. Um, again, they've definitely got the potential to go through groups. Um, but when you start looking at uh, putting them in groups, you're looking at those top eight teams, and yeah, I think it's a it'll be a question of who they end up against in that that lower bracket match, and um, whether they pull through that. I don't know. Forty fiery, anything to add for this team? Oh no, I think I think. The, um... I, I, I... I would say group stage, they, they get through most likely. Definitely been, and I think as Demar said, it depends on who they get lower bracket, whether or not they get um, better than top 16. Uh, I do think scaling is definitely going to be a problem on a good amount of skill sets. They'll likely have some weaknesses that, it depends on if the team they, they go up against obviously can exploit their weaknesses. And if that happens, then yeah, top 16. I'm putting them top 16, but they do have, I think, insane upset potential. Yeah, I agree. So they could very well be top 12. Would not surprise me in the slightest, but I think just as a baseline, top 16 is probably around where I'd put them. Yep. All right, on to the next team. Going to be going on to Bob, uh, one of, I, I think, the best teams in the tournament. Neneric, Kriller, Bubbleman, Reedcat, Scroll, Raiko, Nanoya, and Lucrece. Um, their lowest ranked player, Lucrece, is uh, also just better than his rank would suggest in tournaments. Uh, one of the mainstays for Team Romania in the US World Cup, and uh, I think the rest of these players are household names in tournaments by now. Uh, if you don't know any of these players, you're kind of living under a rock. Um, Bob is one of the teams that I think is also in contention for the win and uh, top three very, very likely for this team. Um, I think this is the team that... I, I think this team I'm going to put top either top one or top three. I'll put them top one for now because I have APAC Radiant top three. Um, but I think it literally just depends on the day which of these teams are better. So I, I think they're both extremely good and very, very close. I maybe give a slight edge to Bob, but I have no idea, honestly. This is an extremely good team. In my opinion, a lot of this team relies on whether or not Bubble Man is uh, playing the game as well as Nanoya. I think those two... <laughs> If they're busy with a lot of other stuff going on, then I'm not too sure this team would have its full potential realized. But if those two show up, then this is definitely a very interesting team that definitely has the potential of getting first. Might be a bit spicy. I'm going to put them top six just because I think they're going to get fourth. I think they're like definitely top four. And there's two teams or three teams I put ahead of them. APAC Radiant, obviously one of them. There's two more th uh, teams I think will just edge them out. Um, I put, you know, this is going to be the strongest top six team for sure that I put, but I do think there's two teams that can, uh, that aren't APAC that can beat them out. Yeah, I've, I, I, I see which team, well, I think I see which team is, uh, has caught your eye. Um, again, I've put them towards top three, um, simply because I think, again, you've got to put someone there, right? And uh, one of those, one of these two teams will get to the other one when we get there. But um, I expect to see two of these teams to be fighting against each other. And I don't know. I just I feel like Bob might be able to to edge it out. But again, I agree with Fiery. It, it depends if everyone is playing as they're expected to. 
what, what I will say as well is I think they're going to be insane before late stage because I think they have a lot of really good consistency, well-rounded players. I think once you get to like semifinals, finals, grand finals, so those levels of pools, I think there's going to be a lot of skill sets where they get third, fourth man on skill cap. Um, and that's where some of the other teams in the top four are going to have the advantage. So this is like a nightmare team to encounter early on in mid stage. But I think late stage are going to have some openings. And I think there's three teams who can exploit this. I, I, I do agree with that assessment a little bit, but I think uh, just being able to fill pretty much any skill set up until maybe finals, um, if not grand finals, is going to be very, very good for this team. So stick stick by my uh, my prediction for now, and uh, hopefully we'll see this team go far in the tournament. For now, though, on to the next team, as I uh, have navigated off the correct tab and need to go back to it. On to the next team, which is Karamba, uh, a European team, actually. Learman, Kagura, Yukari Smug, Lexanox, Ohio, Nessie, Grippa, and Erema. And uh, unfortunately, this is a team that uh, is not going to be able to qualify because they did not read the rules. Um, let me just double check and make sure that this is completely correct here. Um, but I believe this is a team that, uh, does not have the correct team composition. This is a team with players from multiple different regions. Yeah. Um, they are not going to be able to play the tournament because they have players from both North America and Europe. So, uh, did not read the rules, unfortunately. And, uh, DNQ! Automatic DNQ. Thank you, Karamba. No. Oh, that's kind of unlucky. That's kind of unlucky. They just did not read the rules. And so, uh... Maybe Yukari Smug is in EU right now? It just hasn't flag changed? We'll is that a possibility? We'll have to see, but Liruman is also Brazilian. Kagira is also Brazilian. Okay, in um, that case, then yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah, and then, uh... want to see where Ohio is from. Okay, in the Netherlands, but yeah. Um, mo three different players from South America in this team, so, uh... If they if they did not read the rules, then uh, L, yeah L. Damn. On to the next one. Uh, if they do happen to have players that are actually living in Europe at this time, um, then we'll I'll go ahead and uh, contact or they can go ahead and contact me for uh, an exception. Given that uh, three of their players are in South America, they'll need that. On to the next team, gonna be Dapur Mipol. With uh, Average Rank 30k, Kai Razel, Meeple, Raka Milkita, Jokowi, Dems, Faith6, Roddy 7002, and Supreme Sultan. Unfortunately, I think very similar to the uh, first DNQ team that we had, uh, very low average rank is going to result in a very, very tough time during the qualifiers for this team. Uh, and fifth from the bottom in terms of average rank, you do not really expect to qualify. Yeah, I'd have to agree. There's a pretty big rank gap between the 32nd ranked team and this team. I think it's a gap of like 20k ranks, so like from 10,000 to 30,000. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely going to be a tough one unless they're all secretly like offline players or something that I don't know about. Yeah, the, the 32nd ranked team also is actually 8k. Uh, the one you're oh, on okay. is 33 yeah. ranked. So, uh, yeah, quite a, quite a big average seeding gap, although with the uh, previous team that we just saw not being able to play, I suppose 10k is correct there. So. Yeah, very likely to not qualify, unfortunately, for Dapper Meeple. We'll see if they can upset, but uh, 30k to 15k is the next uh, lowest ranked team. Is quite a big gap. All right, Demarsh Fiery, I'm assuming uh, similar opinions, so we'll just move on to the next one, which is Eat 'em Up. Shadoos, the old men team, let's go! The old men team. Shadoos, Lul, Papika, Kirochi, Five Joshi, Hanori, Nev, and Ezius. Uh, yeah, this is a team that is filled with players who, uh, well, in Kurochi's case, are actually still active tournament players, but a lot of the rest of them, uh, older active tournament players who, uh, oh, that's actually Son Goku, by the way. That is not Kurochi. That's fake Kurochi, Son oh. Goku PL. So, <laughs> uh, got yeah. him. Um, Son Goku is still an active it. tournament player, but yeah, most of this team, uh, old men. 
I think this is our first top 32 team. I think this is a team that almost certainly qualifies, but probably goes like one and one in groups. Like, I don't think they're 0-2 in groups, but I think they're one and one in groups. I, I don't think they make it out of groups because you, you effectively have to go 2-0 in groups unless your entire group is one and one. So I think, I think this is a top 32 team for me. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd I, agree I think with I agree that. as well. I, I, I hope, I'd love for them to get through, though, to the bracket stage. Yeah. All right. Um, I think similar opinions for everyone, so we'll be putting them top 32 and moving on to the next team, which is Ekpu Namda with Malashevsky, Nahus, Tomas Sheik, Rafis, Bartek, Michni, Splitty, and Bobiak. Uh, Poland OWC, anyone. Poland OWC, anyone. I, I think this is a very good team, and I think they'll have a very good time in this tournament. I don't know whether to put them top 6 or top 12, I'm going to be honest, because there's a lot of really good teams that we still haven't talked about. Um, and I feel like there's enough variance that on a good weekend, they are top 6, and on a bad weekend, they are top 12. Because um, they're still so many really good teams with scaling similar to theirs that we haven't talked about quite yet. So I, I don't know where to put them, to be honest. It's kind of like, it's the same issue yeah. as the uh, Pol Polish OWC team where they have, I mean, they have Naus and Malashevsky. Like, you literally cannot go wrong with those two at the helm. But I think Poland always just sort of somewhat underperforms in OWC to the point where they never really get the podium. I think they got it last year, if I'm correct, but it, it, it's just like at the high level, I'm not too sure if their supporting players are going to be enough to take care of some of the uh, upper echelon of teams. It's going to be close. I, I think they're either going to get the high end, they're going to be like one of the strongest top 12 teams or one of the lower top six teams, but I have faith that they can get top six. I think just off the back of Malice Nahus as a duo. Um, and I think the rest of the supporting roster, when looking at the other teams that are going to be in contention for that slot, um, I think it should be, be enough. And I think it's going to depend on bracket. I think bracket is going to influence this a lot. If they get an unlucky bracket, they get one of the stronger teams um, in the losers. They might get top 12, but I'm going to say top 6 for now. Yeah, I've, I've put them top 6. I, I think that, you know, they've got... They, they've got certain skill sets that I think they could take all the way to, to finals, grand finals level. But yeah, I think, again, it's going to be bracket, isn't it? A lot of this is going to be who do they end up against. And I think once we start filling out a lot of these slots, we'll kind of see who we're putting up against each other. And we might might have to tweak this one. Yeah, I guess I'll go top six for now. I'm really not... Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that they're top 6 or top 12, frankly, so I don't really know still where to put them. Um, Wait, the I Poland think, outer. Yeah, I mean, I think even on a good weekend, they can get top 3, right? Like, this is a team with the potential to go really far in the tournament, um, but I don't know exactly how far they're going to go, and I think anywhere from top 12 to top 3 is reasonable for this team. Um, I do not think they will win the tournament outright. I think that's the one thing that I, I don't think is going to happen. But I think they're probably a team that qualifies in top eight and gets to skip the group stage. I, I do think they're that good. So I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm really unsure exactly where they're going to end up. But I, I think they're an extremely good team. And uh, if they are top 12, I think they're like top eight, right? Like one round away from getting the finals. All right, on to the next team after Ekpunamda is going to be LGBT Kittens. Saiku, Aknome, Flaro, Ju Shiesty. Who is that? Somebody tell me who that rename is. Solar, Nick1324, That's Gerbsy. And Type Diamond. That's Gerbsy? That's okay. Gerbsy. That's Gerbsy. All right. Um, this team is a mixed bag. Like, you have a couple of really good players, but a lot of their best players are mostly mechanics players, right? Nick is a very good tournament player, but often uh, strongest on specifically stream mechanics. Uh, Flaro, of course, is a very good player, but strongest on speed. Uh, Gerbsy, similar to Nick. Um, Span is a stream player as well. So I think this is a team with really good strengths. And then on uh, some of the other mechanics picks, you have players like Aknome, who's uh, a pretty solid DT player. Um, so I think that this is a team that 
is really, really mechanics heavy. Like, I don't think they're going to do well on mostly any of the gimmicky picks in the pools. Um, so I think that lands them top 32 in my book just because they don't have depth of roster. Um, the, the depth of roster that exists for this team, I think, is mostly on various mechanics picks rather than across the entire pool, which is why I don't think I can give them higher than top 32, even if on some mechanics picks, they will be one of the best teams in the tournament. Yeah, like the issue is you could just literally ban out two mechanics maps or one mechanics map even, and then their no, picks no dwindle by a considerable round, margin. No. Yeah, literally just ban those yeah. out, and then in, all of a sudden you have like maybe three picks at best. That's not really going to cut it against a lot of these teams, unfortunately. No. Yeah, you have so many flow aim specialists, and when. He's, he's, they're just painting a target on their forehead and that map is just never going to be let through and after that they just don't have much depth especially for reading and aim controlly stuff and gimmicky stuff they're going to be losing to a lot of the teams that have more tournament veterans that aren't necessarily as strong into late stage mechanics so yeah, I'm going to say top 32 I don't think they get out of groups yeah I completely agree yeah I mean not, not much to add after all that so um, on to the next one, which is going to be Empicones. It's an interesting one as well. Batball, 6, Nusu, 9, Carlos Flow. Uh, I think that's the second Defons, not the original Defons. Uh, yeah, that is Sozeris or My Angel Flare, uh, not the original Defons. Uh, Pez, Suntan, TFGE, and Twilight. So kind of a mixed bag of... Uh, Mostly Chilean and American tournament players. Lots of four-digit and uh, three-digit tournament players here. Pez, of course, playing in four-digit World Cup right now for USA. Uh, and Suntan CTM, previously a five-digit World Cup player, four-digit World Cup player for Chile. Um, this is another team that I think is probably better than their rank suggests and I think will do very well. I think I'm going to put them top 12 probably on the lower end. Um, they have a lot of players who are, again, very, very good up until you hit that uh, semi-final star rating. And once that scaling, that kind of scaling starts to kick in, I do think players like Suntan and Pez and maybe FGE or Six Nusu will do pretty well. But a lot of the rest of the players will start to struggle with just how high the star rating gets in those uh, semi-finals matches. Yeah, pretty much what you said is exactly my thoughts. They, I think they have the potential of getting top eight. I think that's definitely a thing that could happen, just completely depending on the bracket, obviously. But top 12, realistically, I think is probably where they're going to end up. Yeah, they have some really good reading players as well, right? Like Batball and Twilight for gimmick picks will still do very well. But um, I think the depth of roster will start, to, will start to falter, unfortunately. For reference, what is the group stage starting? 6.75, a full star lower than semifinals. Yeah, I mean, if it's 6.75, they 100% are going to be crushing group stage. So at least top 16, I think, no matter what for them. I think for now, I'm just going to leave some room for the higher slots. Um, but I might change up the top 12 because there's a lot of really good, well-rounded tournament players here, especially in the 4, like 4 WC difficulty so yeah they're gonna have a good time in group stage there yeah again i've put them top 16 just because i know that they're likely to get through their um their group stage um but there's a lot of teams to talk about and again depending on how the the losers bracket looks a rough if they go against a, a, a surprising team they might they could go out early, but I definitely think they make it through groups, so I'm putting them top 16. All right. Um, so overall, top 12, I believe. No, top 16 overall, rounding down. Um, so I do think maybe we'll adjust later but for now top 16 overall rating for this team and now on to the next one it's gonna be european goats uh the very last registration in as the bell rings ba yeri skilla hifkill jack Pax, tim kackner andros and Aliard. Uh, i think this is a team that gets top 12 but is outperformed by slightly better teams leading into finals weekend 
So I think this is a team that is probably top eight in the tournament overall, um, but is going to struggle a little bit getting into that top six, personally. I wouldn't be surprised to see top six, but I'm going to go on the safe side and say high top 12, like top eight, as you said. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good team. Top 12 for sure. I think they have some really solid mechanics. They have, like, they'll be good in group stage, so they won't be, you know, out, uh, out depth that hard, and then I think they win at least one match in the loser's bracket, but I think past that, it's going to depend. Yeah, they've got the potential, so I would say top 12. All right, so putting them in top 12 and going on to the next team. Again, a, a really solid team, lots of very good players, but uh, there's also lots of very good teams, so ranking all of these teams correctly is uh, very hard. On to the next one, it's gonna be first seed with with average rank 36,000. Uh, Ty Rizzle, Razorfruit is on this team. Axolotl, Feudal, Very Asian, Melonhead Gaming, uh, Akize and AC010010. So, uh, obviously, Razorfruit is the big standout player for this team. Depth of roster, not super there. You have uh, three five digits and a six digit on this team. So, I think a lot of the best uh, players are going to be perma lobbied if they want to qualify. I don't know whether to put this team DNQ or top 32 just based off the existence of Razorfruit. Um, I think I'm going to say they qualify just because Razorfruit exists. Yeah, especially with one of the teams DNQing automatically, because of yeah. the... Yeah, automatically, I, and also having a couple players who can be permanent lobbied and, and make enough of a difference. And there's not too many players that are going to DNQ, or t teams that are going to DNQ. Um, so I, I think they get through, but yeah, I, I don't think uh, they're going to have a time in group stage. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put them on DNQ for this. I think Razor Fruits is like there's a good chance of them pulling through. Um, but I think I think there's a team that might overall have more um, diversity in it that might edge them into qualifiers. Um, but again, we'll see. Fire anything to add? No, not really. I think Razorfruit can solo carry them to top 32, honestly. Fair enough. All right. So top 32 overall based on three people putting them in there. And now on to the next team. Good night, Ojo-sama with Jolene, Breast, No Head, Axorite, a Hot Dog, Chiyu, and uh, Chibi, Mariko, and Agagak. I'm going to double check this team and just make sure because I know... Uh, Jolene is a mare. Oh no, this is the this is the full Malaysian team. Okay, um, so yeah, full Malaysian team uh, with a couple of standout players like Chiu. I, I do think this is you know everyone is four digit except for one six digit player, which drags down the average rank a lot here. So I think this is another team that qualifies, not very highly, but I think they qualify for this tournament. Yeah, I agree. I also never trust somebody who's exactly at a rank threshold because I'm like, dude, there's like, true, he's six digits, but so just barely six digits. We don't know. We don't know what he's up. With, he's capable of. So, a farm to uh, 98k 68 days ago was previously rank 110k and uh, has not touched any farm whatsoever uh, since that farm period uh, over two months ago. So. Um, yeah, and has a tournament diary listed on the profile. Yeah, okay, six-digit uh, ranker. And only plays sudden death. Oh, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, three, three horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. Uh, Demarsh Fire, anything else for this team? No, I think you said it succinctly enough. All right, so that's good night, Ojosama. Going to be going on to the next one, Team Hatsune Miku, with Arnold, Intercambing, Mathy, Kama, Woodchi, Riot, Will Cookie, and number 37. Uh, number 37 significantly dragging down the average rank here, but I think his role on this team is very clear. He's here to play low AR hidden. Um, and... That guy's not four digit. He's not four, <laughs> He's not four digit. digit. That's, such a, that's <laughs> such a lie. Yeah. Um, 
this is one of those teams that I think is going to do extremely well overall in the tournament. Um, they have a lot of extremely good and seasoned tournament players. Uh, and to cap it off, despite having somebody who's ranked 2,000 on the team, they are still uh, sixth overall in average rank. I think this team is top six. Um, I, I don't know about top three, but I think they're a very, very competitive team. I put that in overall yeah, instead of on my own. There we go. Yeah, this is like... Um... I think they're in contention for top three if they have a really good run. But I, I do agree because of the... Like, this is an insanely good team, but I think it's because of the competition. I think they almost definitely land in top six. I can't imagine them getting lower than that. Um, but they could get top three uh, if they have a, a great, great couple matches. Top four, I'm locking it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Um... Yeah, I'll put them in top six for now. Um, again, still, still lots of teams to talk about. So um, they're they're a strong roster. They're going to go far in the bracket. So there's no doubt they're top six. All right, on to the next team. How oh, this MF go live? L9 Matuit, Alex Belea. I'm not pronouncing that name. No, nope, Humania. Uh, Futakuchi, Mana, Account, Raze, and Sylvian. I am not super familiar with this team. I think this is a team that I feel like should do overall pretty well, but with a lot of players who maybe don't have the skill cap or consistency to go super far in most open rank tournaments, I think I put them top 32 overall. Um, I think they're like another 1-1 one, one group stage team. Like, they, they definitely have the potential to get out of groups, but I, I don't know for certain that they do, and it makes me hesitant to put them top 16. Yeah, I recognize some of these guys from, like, the four-digit scene, um, potentially older four WCs as well. I definitely think, like, some of these players have got the potential to go... They're, 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 ex they're an experienced team, um, but I don't know if they scale up with the teams that we're putting in the top 16. Um, so again, yeah, I think they'll pick up a win in the racket stage, but I'm uh, sorry, in the group stage, but I'm not sure necessarily that they're going to win their group, but they're, they're one of the ones that could potentially. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be one of the stronger teams to not get out of groups, but uh, if, it, if matches go extremely well for them, they get the perfect group when they could do it, but I think it's relatively unlikely because of the competition. Fire anything else? Or no? Uh, no, not really. Alright. On to the next team. I will show up once with uh, <laughs> Artoria, my angel, Gender Blender, which is the uh, Indian version of Gender Bender, uh, Agnes Digital, Chess, Cyan, Akinami, Soft Bunny, and Araga Kiwi. I'm going to be honest, I don't know a ton about most of these players. I know Chess, of course, is very good. Um, but a lot of their higher-ranked players, I really don't know too much about. Um, does make me a little unsure exactly where to put them. Um, I do think probably a similar sort of deal to the previous team that we just had, where I don't have the confidence to put them top 16 and say that they'll get out of groups, and I don't think they'll qualify in top 8. So I probably just put them top 32, because I think they'll probably have an okay time in group stage, but not be able to get out. Well, you know, their, their name says that they'll show up once, so they'll show up for qualifiers and then not play the rest of the tournament. So. Uh, true. It's, true. It's, it's top 32. It's, it's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, because they're showing up once for qualifiers and then never again, putting them in top 32, here to no-show the group stage matches. On to the next team, which is Han Dam. Um, mm. I think the uh, not quite the lowest ranked team by average rank, but pretty down there. Um, they do have one high ranked player in Kakali, who is three digit. Um, and a couple of four digits as well with uh, Saraway, Maracas, the TH government, um, RTX, and uh, D's Nuts as their last player. But um, I don't know exactly how well this team will do, right? Like if they do put in their captain or ES link, I feel like they might not qualify. But if they uh, 
if they perm a lot with the four digits and three digits, maybe they do qualify and get into top 32. I, I, I don't really know about this team. Yeah, this is a this is a tough one to figure out whether they qualify or DNQ. And it, I think it's because like the average rank is the average rank because lies. of uh, yeah because of the like 331k player. Um, so I'm gonna pensively put them in top 32 for now. I think they can't qualify because of the uh, yeah three digit and, and four digit players in the in the team. No, what happened to his avatar? <laughs> Yeah, so whoever whoever messed with the the avatar, press Control Z, please. Surely, surely it's not. Uh, surely we're, we're fine. Not the hashtag there reference. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm also gonna put them top 32 just because like the 330k player is completely throwing off the average rank, and I think generally, um, if you have a full team of four digits, you're expected to qualify, even if it's maybe only six players. So uh, surely, surely qualifying. Maybe an O2 group stage team, but qualifying, I think. Yeah, I'd agree. Right. On to the next one. After Condom is Meow with Haunt, Chud Sun, Desuk, Serbia Trucker, also known as Runny Sunny, Markram, Defi, Gat Money TJ 1944, or 1994, also known as Aleph, and Escru Pulio. I don't know who that is. I don't know. I did not. Not a name change. I mean, yeah, there's some um, heavy hitters here. Like Markram, is, that's a cap rank. Don't don't trust that at all. He's way better than that. Haunt as well. Uh, really solid. A lot of gimmicky aim control stuff and hidden. Um, Desuk. Really good player, obviously Chad Sun. Really good mechanics player, I think. I'm gonna put um man. I think I think it's a case between top twelve or uh top sixteen, but I'll yeah. put them in top twelve. Just because of their yeah, high end mechanics. And I and also do think with like Barkroom and Haunt they have like enough reading and aim control to to contest those skill sets. I think a lot of these players are really focused on mechanics and not like tech aim control stuff, which aside from the reading players is still going to be a, a pretty solid portion of the map pools. I think they're a team that gets out of groups, but loses in round of 16 and quarterfinals to more flushed out teams, if that makes sense. Like I think too much of this roster is focused on the mechanics, like Chud Sun, Desuk, Runny Sunny, uh, Defi, Aleph, are all very good mechanics players, but not super good at a lot of the more gimmicky picks. So I think they're overly reliant on Markham and Haunt for those. So I, I think I put them top 16 for that. And I, I just don't know enough about Escru Pulillo uh, to uh, reasonably say that they can get uh, top 12 with that additional player. Also, I just want to say Marshmary playing right now is giving me flashbacks. <laughs> flashbacks to as what map, bro as a map i retry spam when i was oh, low Lord. ranked way too much man that's a you problem yeah. that is, <laughs> the marsh fiery top 12. yeah I think, I think they'll probably do a bit better than top 16 honestly their, their overall mechanics well-roundedness, I think, carries them quite a bit, and they still have enough gimmick to get past some of the more complex gimmick stages, I think. I mean, you already mentioned Haunt and Markram, but I don't know. I, I feel confident they can get top 12, I think. Yeah. yeah, I've put them as a team that I think could do quite well. Um, again, if we, if we assume that they've got someone else who can maybe play some of the more gimmicky stuff... And they can create a three-man that's very good on gimmick. Gives them another couple of points in the bag. So I'd see them pushing that top 12. Um, again, they could also not manage to get a, a victory out of the group stage. But again, I think we'll see. All right. On to the next team, which is Mom's Touch. Thanks, guys. Uh, Milk Teaism, Amamiya Kokoro, Nathan Ram, MCY4, Suyong, Doomsday Fanboy, Zhong Young, and AKNZX. Um, it's a very good team. I think this is a team that is an another one of the ones that's contesting for top three, if not in the top three. Um, 
a hard team to place, honestly, between... I, I don't think they win. I, I think they are beaten by APAC Radiant, uh, at the very least. Um, but I, I do think they're extremely strong, and I don't know whether I'm putting them top three or top six. So I'm going to let other people go first. Um, I guess I'll put it out there. I'm going to put them in the top six. Um, I definitely think they're a contender for fourth. Um... But I, I think it's a toss-up between a team like this and maybe Bob, for example. Um, they're, they're both really good teams, and they're really well-balanced and diverse. But, um, yeah, it, it's a hard call, I think, for this one, whether to put them in the top three or the top six. But I'm going to put them in the top six just because I think they're pushing to reach the top four. But whether they go into the top three, I think, depends who they meet in the bracket. Yeah, I think this is a team that can definitely top three, and I think that's where I'm going to put them. I think they have a great speed lineup with um, Zhong Young, AK, and ZX. Um, I think Doomsday, Fanboy, and, and Suyong, and, and also Milti, of course. They have really good mechanics. They have MCY4 Nathan Ram, who I think can duo carry like a lot of aim control, um, Nomad 3s, Nomad 4s, and with just some decent backing from the other, other players. MCY4 obviously getting top six in Corsair's close, so the notable standout uh, carry. Um, I think they can top three. I think they have enough strengths to to be very dominant on a few skill sets against a lot of these teams. Same. I, I think they can have the potential to top three. Not too sure about winning, but they definitely are able to top three. Kokoro and uh, Doomsday Fanboy, I think, in particular, would be a insane duo to watch on a lot of these maps. I, I agree a lot with what you said, Vordy, but there's one team in mind that I have that I think is top three over this roster, so I'm putting them top six. And I, like, there's too many teams at the top end who I think are, like, extremely competitive for that top three that well, it becomes uh, really yeah. hard to place them all. But by the way, I think we agree on that team. I just put Bob lower than you did. But yeah, yeah. I we think we definitely all agree about, with the last I, team. <laughs> yes, I, I agree on the team you're, you're thinking about, and I do think they're going to be stronger than like second, put probably. Yeah. All right. On to the next one, which is Momasas, Mom, Momasos Diego. Uh, Damn Daniel, Dorito, Pagos, Radio Wind, uh, or radioned, maybe. My Angel Bow, and Fentanyl Seeker. What the <laughs> hell? Manolo and Antonio. Um, I, I think you're just looking at Manolo and Antonio here as the carry players for this team. I do think this is again a pretty strong roster, but I don't think strong enough to get into top 16. As a reminder, we have uh, one, two, three. Uh, or five spots left overall in the top 12 or in the top 16. So with only five spots left in the top 16, I just don't think they have what it takes to get there. And uh, I'm going to be putting them top 32. I do think they're again, a very good team, but just not quite, uh, they, don't, they don't got that dog in them for top 16. You yeah, would have to agree. I think it's just too competitive in the higher ranks and the higher teams to uh to get past that yeah i think we're all in agreement there i yep. think it's very much that they are a good roster but when you stack them up to who is likely to end up in the top 16 i'm not sure they come out on top all right on to the next team nagate which is uh, Mauricio, Mauricio Roblox, Sans Reps, Alcon, Serena. I love Sans Reps, Estopa, Hiding Closet, and Commandoc YouTube. Uh, I think very similar to the previous one. And I, I think uh, a team with fewer of those standout players who we know to be solid in tournament. So um, just a team that I think, you know, high enough rank probably to qualify, but not high enough rank probably to uh, make up for the seeming lack of experience in tournaments. Yeah. I have to read. Nobody anything yeah, else to add? We're all good? Moving on? <laughs> I'd love to see them go to top 16, but yeah, I'm not sure they're experienced enough necessarily to make it to that level. Um, 
So top 32 is where they go. All right, on to the next one. After Nagate is Nipis Madu, which is Hakui Koyori, Dito, Nazuna Amamiya, Styx, Nope KJK, That Noob Guy, GS Blank, and Ryoshi. Mostly Indonesian roster with a couple of other very good tournament players from around the Asian region, including uh, including Nope KJK and uh, Ryoshi from Japan. Nope KJK from South Korea. Um, this is a very good roster, and I think one of the teams that is absolutely making it out of groups. Uh, are they top 12 or are they top 16 is my question. I think I put them top 12 on the lower end. Uh, I, I don't ever think they're top 8, but I think there's definitely a, a pretty likely world where they're top 12 over uh, top 16 here. Yeah, for sure. I think this, this team definitely has enough firepower to get top 12. Um, but yeah, as, as you get into the top 8 level, it's, it's, it's a bit tough. But yeah, lower end of top 12 or maybe even mid to high end of top 12. But there's a lot of uh, really good tournament players here, especially the like, Indonesian like, players who also would have played with each other before. Yeah, I, th I think it's a question of, of whether they, you know, it's how they perform in qualifiers. You know, are they, like you said, they may be pushing that higher echelon of between top 8 and top 12, but maybe maybe they perform exceptionally well in qualifiers and they, they edge out into that top 8. Um, and you know don't have to play the qualifying round or the the group stage but yeah it's hard to see them you don't see them pushing to that top six but maybe maybe they ed they edge out a top eight at best fire anything else or moving on i don't got anything all right you guys said everything i was going to next one up otobul galati uh, the, I believe, lowest ranked average uh, rank team in the tournament, yes, at uh, average rank 67k, um, and at that, not a single four digit on the team, so whereas with some of these other lower ranked teams, you see, you know, standout players like Razor Fruit, for example, uh, not the case here, or uh, as with the previous team, a lot of four digits, but just one really, really low ranked player bringing down the average rank, not the case here. Um, and I think this is just a team that is going to very heavily struggle on a very hard qualifier pool. Agreed. Uh, yep. I think uh, literally everyone has the same pro thought process here. So I'm just going to move <laughs> on to the next one. Good luck in qualifiers. And uh, hopefully you can upset. On to the next team. Going to be Parmesan with Mejuro McQueen, Daitaku Helios, Ampy, Toybot, Birchman, Spicy, Genderbender, and Cut Paper. Uh, besides Cut Paper being an obvious D-ranker, Toybot is actually an extremely good tournament player. Daitaku Helios is a better player than the rank would suggest. Same for Ampi. Birchman is disgusting. Uh, belongs in three-digit. Um, and then, of course, Spicy and Genderbender are both very good. Mejuro McQueen as well. Um, a little bit more of a specialist than some of the other members that I've been talking about, like Birchman and Cut Paper, but uh, also a very good tournament player. So uh, this is a roster that is going to perform better than their average rank would suggest. And uh, for that reason, I think I'm putting them top 16. I don't know if they got what it takes to win matches in the bracket stage outside of groups, but I think when they are in groups, they are a team you do not want to face. Yeah, this is tough. Ampy as well is a, is a insanely good player um, for their rank. This is really difficult because I think this is like a, a shoe in for top 16, but they could upset some teams with higher ranked players. Um, and get top 12 potentially just off the back of a lot of these players being pre-experienced in tournaments like notably cut yeah. paper um obviously birchman as you mentioned uh, i think i watched him absolutely crush in 4 wc just recently and uh, mp's really obviously have, like spicy with the mechanics but i'll say top 16 for now but they could they could definitely get top 12 if they have a good run Yeah, again, it's 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 where they sit in the bracket and what the matchups look like in that in that losers round. Um, I think they'll they'll struggle to go up against a, a top eight team, um, but you know against against one of the other teams that get through the bracket, maybe maybe they pull through. Um, but yeah, top sixteen is probably the best place for them at the moment. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for this team, unless, Fire, you have anything to add for this team, but... Nah, everyone covered everything I was going to be saying, so... All right. 
on to the next roster, which is Pencil Vanilla with Armani Dilbo, Blue Chinchampa, Bunny Like Money, Danini, Darwin, Leggings, Lulzep, and Sunray. Roster. Barry, why don't you start us off on this one? Because you've been, uh, you've been unfortunately last on a lot of the previous ones, and I feel like you haven't had the chance to say uh, I mean, I don't really have that much to say about this one, honestly, because I don't know many of the players outside of Bunny Like Money and Lulzep. Everyone else I'm completely not familiar with. All I know is Bunny Like Money, obviously, is the standout player there, but really only strong on mechanics-oriented maps. Definitely good at them. Like, probably one of the best mechanics players and flow aim players in general recently, at the very least, but Outside of that, I'm not too sure what this team would necessarily be good at. Yeah, and I think Sunwraith as well is like a flow aim, uh, flow aim specialist. But when you have like Sunwraith and Bunny like Money as the highest ranked players, or oh, and you also have Janine, I'm not sure if they're a flow aim player. I hope not, um, because it's like a similar issue to one of the other teams. Where Bro, it was exactly who touched the... Sunwraith's profile? Hit Control Z. Hit Control Z, please. Thank um, you. All right, there we go. But, but yeah, I think <laughs> I, I think this is, a, this is a team where you ban Nomad too, and then they just don't have much to go to go into. But they definitely qualify. Yeah, I mean Lolzip as well um, is someone I recognize. I think he won a four WC a few years ago. Um, so he's definitely in that upper echelon of like four digit three digit players um but I, again i think this could be like a bit of a dark horse team i don't think we know a lot about this team so you know i think the other teams might need to be wary of of uh, who they're up against because there's there's a lot of unknowns here You just had to add I just add, I had to add that, man. Do not touch oh inside the border, God. bro. Do not. There we go. You want me to make it bigger? I got it. I got it. Please take away the no promises. There we go. All right. <laughs> surely, surely now it doesn't show up on uh, on stream. There we go. Let's just double check that. All right, we're good. Um. Yeah, I think I think not too much to add for me. I feel like this is a team that has potential to get top 16 with this roster, but I don't know if they actually get out of groups or not. Um, it really does depend on kind of how well they do in the group stage. And who they're grouped with, I suppose. Yeah, as well. I think there's a lot of variance to how well this roster can do. I have them top 16. Seems like everybody else has them top 32. So top 32 it is. And on to the next roster after Pencil Vanilla is Platano with Skill, Rebo, Alfra, Kazuki K, Ideal, Guarino, Lillian, and Danny. Um, I don't know what to make of this roster, honestly. I, I think this is a team that may struggle in terms of depth of roster from what i know about a lot of the players they're pretty specialized as tournament players um or players who have been around for a very long time and uh can play a lot of stuff but not at the you know super high star rating level that uh, is going to be demanded of like top 12 teams i, I don't know if they're going to be consistent enough on group stage to get out there that's my consideration for this team is if they're uh consistent enough within the group stage to actually get out i i i, uh, I don't know i don't know i think they it depends on the opponents they face really wherever they qualify it really depends on like who they face in group stage uh, for me, I have uh, top 16 already full, so I suppose I'm putting them top 32, but I definitely think that's a, a higher-end top 32 team. I think that's a team that ab absolutely can make it out of groups. just depends on their group. I think I'm in a similar position as you. I'm just looking at the fact that I don't really have any space left. Like, I have two teams yeah. I can put, and it's going to be, like, top three and, I think, uh, top 12. So, yeah, I'm just going to have to go with the top, top 32 off the verge of being out of space. Right. 
On to the next one after Platano is Rickma5 winner with Gaby Ramon2, also known as Hammy TR, Tricky Pugster, Arco, uh, TTV UFO, Headstack, It's Shane, and RNG. Uh, I think this team's pretty solid, and I think they're my last addition to top 12. Um, they have a lot of very, very good tournament players overall who should have a pretty good time on both the qualifiers pool, the group stage pool, and uh, round of 16 quarterfinals. Um, especially a lot of these players are very experienced in lower rank range tournaments um, or in open rank tournaments back when the star rating in them was a lot lower, like Headstack, for example. So I think a lot of players and uh, a good depth of roster as well here with uh, a lot of players with kind of diametrically opposed skill sets like Gaby and Arco, for example. I'm putting them top 16 as my last top 16 pick, mostly because I know who I'm going to be putting for the last one on top 12. They do have the potential to go top 12, I think, as you said. I'm not entirely convinced quite yet, but we'll see how they perform in group stage. I think that's going to determine more or less how they're going to perform in the rest of the tournament if they get past. Yeah, I'm going to have to overcap my top 16 for this team, and I'll have to figure out who to move later, but... Yeah, this definitely looks like a top 16 game. All right. On to the next one after Rick 5 winner. We have Tea Party, and suddenly I have to move some teams around as well because... Uh, hey, look, it's the oh, top 12 team I was yeah, talking about. that team's definitely <laughs> better than the previous one. So uh, I don't know who exactly I'm moving around, but I'm definitely moving somebody around with uh, Xion, Lolo233, Lolo235, Crystal, Misha Awa, Max Birio, Hibiki, and F2X. This team is absolutely getting out of round of 16 quarterfinals and into the semis. Uh, are they top six in my book? No, but um, definitely a very good team. Uh, I'm going to have to move somebody else down from top 16. I'm going to figure that out, but uh, tentatively for me, Tea Party top 12. Absolutely. Yeah, agreed. This is um, this is this is like I would say high end of top twelve. This is like a top eight potential team even, but um, you know, definitely one of the stronger top twelve teams. Just really, really well rounded. Crystal obviously just goaded clutch tournament player in everything he does. So they have uh, a lot of great players. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a solid top twelve. Wouldn't be surprised to see a top eight from this team. Um, I think they will decide whether that, uh, w or whether they put themselves in that that top eight slot. But they they have the depth of roster to get there, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them in top eight. I think I have to move down Ah. I think I have to move down Ah and uh, put Tea Party in top twelve over them. Um, and then I, I I don't know who I'm moving down from top sixteen after that. Um, because, again, all of these teams are really good. I guess I, I'm moving down the previous team that we just put in there because um, this is, it's so hard to actually keep this uh, keep this as it should be. I don't know. This is a very, very hard tier list to make. Um, obviously, this team is extremely good, so they're, they're almost certainly top 12. I'd be surprised if they're not. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I think we're all gonna have to do a bit of rejigging at some point. Um, yeah. I'm gonna wait till I get close to the bottom of the list just to make sure I'm not missing yeah. anyone else off first. <laughs> all right, on to the next one. It's Team Name Daniel with uh, a, a name I'm not bothering to pronounce. Dash Semi, Rudge, Aimbot Cone, Mr. Potato, Accelerator, Painted Koala, and Ahoff. This is another team where like I want to put them in the top 16, but I feel like I don't have space to put them in the top 16. Um, yeah, these, these players are all extremely good. Uh, I'm very much struggling to figure out if I want to move somebody down or not. And uh, I think I'll probably end up moving a couple of teams down. Probably, uh, ay, 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 ay. probably, wow, yeah, I don't know. Somebody else go. Somebody else talk about this team. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently trying to, because I, I think this beats out some of the teams in top 16 that I've already put in. Um, 
semi really insane player aimbot cone like you have really good mechanics here you have i think some good depth as well and some turning experience uh i guess the question for me is just who do i do do i boot out now i gotta figure that out yeah i think i'm moving down parmesan and moving up team name daniel personally um, but I think uh, top 16 is already in agreement here for team named Daniel. So they're going in there on the combined list for now. Um, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll just add another row to the sheet and we'll run with that. Put another row on the uh, top 16 and uh, be good with it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let me just double check that the stream still actually looks fine here. Yes, it does. Great. All right, we have the room. Um, so <laughs> I guess we have some overflow now. We have science, we have the room for some overflow. Uh, yeah, this is a good roster with a lot of very solid tournament players. Semi's good in tournament generally. Uh, Accelerator, Ahoff as well, good in tournament. And then you have a lot of really good mechanics players like Rudge, Aimbot Cone, uh, Painted Koala. So... Just a very solid overall roster, well-constructed team as well. All right, on the next one, after Team Name Daniel, is the Freak Squad with Schiazzo, Solo Drinking, Polsky One, Shinkiro, Silvari, Hidayo, Shiox, and 3BDO. And uh, this is another team that I'm just going to put top 16 because I don't know where else to put them. It feels wrong to put them top 32, but they're just... Uh, there's there, there's on paper not enough room, but I'm using the overflow for this one because I don't it does not feel right putting them top 32. Yeah. Um, even the players who are lower ranked here, like 3DBO, are extremely good tournament players who in the early stage, especially group stage, are going to be so scary to play against. Um, same for Hidayo, and of course, uh, Polsky won recently in five-digit World Cup, has since ranked up to three-digit in the span of um, 73 days. 73 days ago, rank 11,000. Yep. Yep, that's that's Polsky 1 for you. Um, well, <laughs> this team... Um, it's, it seems a bit cursed, to be honest. Um, <laughs> they're all around really great players, but I would not want to be in the, the voice call when, when they're playing, because it would be utter chaos at times um and for that and no other reason i put them top 32 for no other reason <laughs> that's all i've got yeah just looking ahead i think there's at least two teams i want to put in top 16 and then an extra team for top three and there's just not enough space i i, I don't think uh we'll be able to compete with some of the other players already in in our tier list all right so uh top 32 combined fiery anything else for this team? Nah, I don't got anything that bad. Alright, on to the next one with the money. Chloe sent Yukimi Minato, made big collab going on, made dress, Habby, Marzi, Wooting, Jamie Dot, and Psycho. Um, despite having a lot of relatively high ranked players, I don't know any of them from tournaments, so I don't have the confidence to put them top 16. I'm gonna go to top 32 here for me. Yeah, I would say I'd say same as as our as we've looked at more of these teams, top sixteen it ended up being way more competitive than I think I initially anticipated. I actually feel like there's kind of too much of a skill set overlap between a lot of these players, especially the high rank ones in particular. Just based on what I'm seeing, it seems very mechanic centric. I'm not too sure if that'll prevent them from qualifying i'm gonna put them in top 32 regardless but that is something to consider i think marsh anything else to add uh no i i like the fact they've got a collab going um and every they'll they definitely make it to to groups but that top 16 is looking pretty scary all right on to the last one in or uh, onto the next team, excuse me, not the last team. Quite the, still a few to go through. Thumping Dinosaur. Love the team name. I did a degree in geology in university, mostly just because I liked dinosaurs and paleontology. So, a uh, great team. I hope they're. Uh, I hope they're in. Uh, Voine, Lysity, Audu, Ika, Jotmo, Gameroft, Bayab, Bayab and Choco. Um, I think this is, again, maybe a team that qualifies, but probably O2 in, in groups. 
Um, I know Jotmo as a tournament player is pretty solid. I know Gameroft is pretty solid, but I do not recognize any other single name on this team. Um, so for that, I have to go top 32. I think, you know, maybe there's a skill cap to qualify near the bottom, but that's just going to make groups all of them more difficult. Yeah, pretty much the same thing for me. Yeah, yeah I have to say the same. All right. Oh, and I forgot to put the money over here also. Okay, there we go. On to the next team after Thumping Dinosaur is Together We Are Terrific. Takedo, oh, yeah. Rectigon, Window Life, Freddy Benson, Boshi Man, Decaton, Caleb, and One Tabby. And uh, I think this is the team we were all saving our last top three spot for, and Fiery was saving his top one spot for. I um, love America. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> understandable to put them top one. I think in the same way that like we all have Bob and APAC Radiant at least top three, uh, all of us are going to have this team at least top three also. This is an extremely, extremely strong roster. Um, without a doubt, the best team from the Americas. Although Hatsune Miku could give them a run for their money. I will say that. I do think uh, if there's any other Americas team that is going to get top three, it's going to be Hatsune Miku. Um, but I think this team edges them out by just a little bit. Extremely strong tournament players across the board uh, and a well-constructed team with one tabby being uh, on the comeback after taking a long break from tournaments with uh, a former tournament ban and not being able to play them for a while. It's a very soft first place, I think. I don't know if they're necessarily going to. I think top three is a shoe in for them, much like it is for pretty much anyone that we have in the top three. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just got to go with the boys here. Yeah, I think you're right by saying well constructed. You have some really good core players who you can just play most things, like Sakito, Rectagon, Decaden, and probably Window Life are going to be core. You have one tabby and boshi for gimmicky stuff one tabby can also play easy which i think will matter late stage like finals grand finals some free mod maps will have the occasional easy advantage and having a player who's really good at easy can definitely make a difference um but yeah i think this is the the second most complete team i think to me behind apac and i i don't think uh like i think either apac or this team are winning and for me i don't think there's like a a close close uh compared to those, those two all right. So uh, to shuffle the overall around, I have put APAC Radiant first, just because two people have APAC Radiant in first, and uh, only one of us have, uh, you know, either Bob or Together We Are Terrific first. Um, so Bob and Together We Are Terrific in top three, APAC Radiant in first with the uh, majority rule there. And on to the next team after Together We Are Terrific is Welcome to Trev City, the return of my goats. They're back again. That last top 12 Get spot enough. I was saving for the Canadian boys. Too slow, Picapone. Sorry, uh, not one of the Canadian boys, but one of the Canadians. Uh, Matthew, Vesperit, Yip, Nuro, and El Condor Pasa, also known as the Pro365. Um, despite the lower rank on the average rank, that's just because of Nuro, and Nuro is better than a lot of three-digit tournament players, so... I don't think they're going to struggle much because of him. In fact, I think he's a bigger asset than a lot of the players on this team. He's that good. For, uh, for a four-digit player. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Trev City three times in Perennial now. Um, you know, you have Sai, Math uh, Matthew, Vesprit, um, and El Condor as well. They've all been in this team before. Um, it's great to see one of the teams from last time come back. So, um, go nuts, guys. Go nuts. Forty fiery. Yeah, it's thoughts. Yeah, there's really lots of really good uh, tourney players here. Lots of good consistency as well. Yeah, it's really solid. I don't know what to say. I think uh, they beat out pretty much every top sixteen team that I've seen. So, oh, that I have in top sixteen. So yeah, definitely give them a twelve. But I don't think they can um, go toe to toe late stage with the top six rosters. Yeah. <laughs> I would go top twelve, but there's one more team I'm saving that final spot for that I think would probably beat them and i don't think there's any other space in my top 12 unfortunately so it's going to be high top 16 for me all right and on to what is probably that team that you were saving the spot yep, for yep that yep. is uh flames terror korea maluko ethan tricks jackson rhythmic rs repersion you're cute and xylus why do people happy is here and uh if i could put them top six i would but uh i guess i'm moving down another top 12 team and uh putting them in there because yeah this is a very good team
Yeah, yeah I've... I have to think. It's, it's, it's putting them in the right place, isn't it, I think, for this one. Um, I, I think... Mm, I think I have it, to move down Assalamu Alaikum here and put wide people happy up in top 12. Um, I agree. I think that's who I'm moving down. Because obviously Assalamu Alaikum, a, a very good team with a lot of really good players, but I this team's just better. Um, and I, I think I prefer all the other teams I have in top 12 over Assalamu Alaikum. So yeah, keeping them there. I think I'm going to have to make the gut-wrenching decision to move down the Australian team. Uh, top 16. Yeah. All right. Uh, Fiery, you are saving a spot for this team, so why don't you talk about them? I don't know if they'll get top 12. I think top 16 might be a bit more reasonable just because they are very mechanics heavy. Oh, pretty much their entire team is full of speed players outside of Ethan. Sorry, Ethan. Uh, but they have enough well-roundedness to get to top 12, I think. Pretty much everyone on this roster obviously is a mechanics player, but they also specialize in something else. Uh, Xylus Hidden, Repersion, also Hard Rock Hidden, basically Light Zootinator. Ethan tricks hidden. He loves hidden. I don't think I've ever seen him not play with hidden. I'd be scared if he didn't, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and Corian is ex excellent on hard rock, so I, I think in general this team is I, well rounded enough to get top twelve. Okay, so putting them overall in the top twelve, and uh, I think moving. I have to move somebody down. I think it's this one that I have to move down. Yeah. So, getting wide people happy in top Okay. Uh, on to the next team. We're two from the end here. On to Winner's Squad with ODVB, Teznin, Zebedee, Greninja, Milo Tlink, Jazzercise, Fireblaze, and Brewop. Um, despite the presence of Jazzercise and Fireblaze, I feel like... How many teams do we have actually registered again? We have 39. So, yeah, there's going to have to be uh, a couple more DNQ spots, and I think this is one of them, unfortunately, for this team. Um, maybe the uh, maybe the, <laughs> maybe the Razor Fruit team is also going to have to be moved down, because I, I, uh, I think a similar fate awaits them, at least for me. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and it seems like pretty much everybody is in agreement there that uh, you just don't have enough of a really solid overall team to make it into top 32. Except for Demarsh, who has them top 32. Congratulations, winner squad. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm taking a gambit on one of them. Uh, I've decided it's winner squad. Um, I could be right. I'm, I might be wrong. I, I don't know anymore. Yeah. <laughs> We're two from the bottom. Who knows? Who knows? All right, on to the very last team. It's an actual Japanese team name. I Google translated this earlier, and it was something like uh, trees are cherry blossoms, people are samurai, I think. Um, <laughs> let me just, yeah, flowers are cherry trees, people are samurai. Uh, Hanawa Sakuragi Hitohabushi is the team name there in Japanese. Metallus Fangirl, uh, Nyanta-san, Rinko Shirokane, Joshua GC, uh, Cheng Osage-chan, Chivial, and that one under. And unfortunately for this team, I think I am also putting you in DNQ with uh, 39 teams. That means seven in the DNQ slot, and that is going to be my seventh. Um, while uh, players like Rinko Shirokane, uh, Joshua GC, uh, actually, I don't know. They have three six digits on this team. God, or three, three three digits on this team. God, this is hard, man. What? A, ah, I'm putting them in top 32. I'm putting them in top 32. I do think they qualify. I don't think they win matches in groups, but I think they qualify. Maybe they win a match. Who knows? Um, I think it all depends on how well they do in the qualifiers. Yeah, I think I think I, I agree. I think I'll have to move uh, another team down to DNQ. Oh man, I can't decide who. Though. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I need to move three teams down from top 16. 
Who am I moving down from top 16? Hold on. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, let, let's take a minute and just do this on our own so that we can all uh, uh, compile it at the end here. In the meantime, take your screenshots of the overall tier list uh, before it goes away. This is uh, the initial tier list. And uh, after this, we'll uh, be moving some teams around here to try and make space for everything. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna move down. Callers will fall, I think, into top 32. Um, team name Daniel, I think, stays top 16. Ah uh, stays top 16. Actually, maybe Ah uh, goes down. No, Ah uh, stays in. I feel like this is a situation where you gotta predict who gets unlucky. I, that's yeah. what that's what I'm feeling. Like I'm looking at these five top sixteen te teams. I think they're all like contenders for that slot. It's just somebody is gonna get a rough bracket or like a rough performance, and you just have to predict who. Yeah, and I think for me, it's uh, a couple of teams. It was um, Ballers Will Ball and uh, Assalamu Alaikum. I think I'm moving down also. Just for team comp reasons. Like, I see a lot of mechanics players on this team. Um, and then I think I'm moving down other cat profile picture team. I don't actually see them on the show. Yeah, I'm moving down the freak spot as well from top 16 into top 32. And I think that'll be my top 16. And then I have to move down one team here. Probably gonna be the money for me. I don't know. Um, Inner squad is already down there. Goodnight Ojosama, I think, can make it. Uh, maybe I just move down Goodnight Ojosama. I don't know. I think for me, the team I moved down for the DNQ is Condem. But I, yeah, I think for the DNQ, it's definitely gonna be a toss up for the border of top 32 and past that. Oh man, this is so hard. All right, y'all uh, y'all deliberate for a second. I'm gonna use the restroom and when I come back, we'll, uh, we'll fix the overall tier list. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to go with general consensus and move Parmesan down. Yeah, I think I've gotten my top 16 sorted at this point. Some tough teams to move, though. just know like we guaranteed got one of these teams wrong <laughs> oh i mean i mean yeah if anybody if any one of us have a perfect top 16 but like you know perfect uh bracket that's insane i don't think it's ever happened before but it should yeah. <laughs> Only one day, dude. it's definitely mine 100 this, <sighs> this is the this is the one you, you don't have to watch the matches you just you, you already know what's gonna happen all right. Marsh, you have four in top six now. Okay. I know. I'm re I'm deciding who I want to have in in the fourth slot at the end. But yeah, that's my top six isn't changing. Alrighty. I think I think we we agreed exactly on the top six teams though. Yeah. I think it's just the order, but I think we uh, we agreed on who's gonna be there. Yeah, I'm just gonna double check all of the 
teams we have up in top 12 in order. Um, oh, two of us have Meow top 12, and two of us have Meow top 16. I'm going to see if there's any other discrepancies. No, no other big discrepancies there. So uh, the other top 16 teams, we all have that team. There's Meow for me in top 16. Any other team that two of us had in tops? I think it's R is one of them. Or top 12, sorry. Oh, top 12. Or no, Meow was uh, top 12 for three, te three people. Okay. Meow stays. Okay, so top 12 is set. That's not changing. Now for top 16. Ah, uh, we have two people with top 16 and two people with top 32. That's one that could change. Next one up, everyone moved down. So I'm Everybody just gonna moved. move that team down. Uh, gambling team, three people have top 16, so that's probably staying. This next team, everyone moved down, it seems, Parmesan. Um, this next team, everyone has top 16, so that team's staying. Next one, everyone has top 16 as well. And Assalamu Alaikum is also only two people. So, uh,. We're 50-50 on Assalamu Alaikum and Ah being top 16 or top 32. Let's hear the arguments, boys. Um, Assalamu Alaikum supporters go first. Why are they top 16 over Ah? That'd be a fi fiery to marsh. Hello, hello gamers. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm um, I'm I'm still in top six mode. Hang on. Um, okay. I just think it's I think they're both really contested um I, I think they have a slight advantage but it's very slight all I, things I think, considered like that that's basically the margin between top 32 and top 16 honestly yeah. for a lot of these teams it's like razor thin literally could go either way I'm, I, I'm just sticking with my guns on this one I think I've just put them there because I think of the star rating leans in their favor. And for no other reason. Yeah. I, I think I have Ah there just because I feel like their roster is more well-rounded. Like you have your good mechanics players, but you also have a lot of the lower ranked players there specifically for a lot of the more gimmicky maps. And I feel like that roster composition is so much more important at the lower star rating. That's, that's why I have them up there in top 16. Because um, it really is just like, who is more consistent in group stages? That's it. That's all that matters here. So, I think head-to-head -head on a group stage map pool, I feel like uh, wins because they have a, a more well-rounded team composition. Yeah, for me, it's like just going through the skill sets. Like, I think reading, like, uh, Asalaam Aleikum has... Sherry Tori is a really good reading player and probably a couple others, but I think overall, the reading for man is just better for R. Uh, I think their hard rock is really good with like Sayo, like Zintex was like one of the hard rock carries in Fremont for Australian OWC where they really got top three, like Insane Mechanics, O Slash is really good at hard rock. Um, and for the third, I think they likely have Emil Bus, who's really good. So I think they went hard rock. I think DT speed is um, likely probably, to be probably, in favor of Asylum. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say too, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, and also I think like aim control stuff, like no mod four, no mod three. I think I want to give it to R, uh, because O slash is insane attack, Sio is really good attack, and I think like they have enough uh, backing players who will be good enough at this targeting. So I think R just wins a few more skill sets. So I'm gonna put them ahead. Oh. Um. Yeah, screw it. We'll keep both of them in and uh, just have. <laughs> the one extra team in there because why not um i'll go ahead no, and... I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll switch it up let's put r in above uh as i okay. shall uh the marsh is switching that. it no, i'm let's switching go. it last minute you've beaten me down <laughs> there you go 
Okay. Um, so now we have all of these teams are in the... Uh, I just got to make sure the top 16 is good here. We have these... Everybody's got these four teams. Yeah. So now I just need this team down. And I think that should be correct. Yeah, because we just have to move down one more team from the... Um, DNQ, we all have this team. We all have the second team as well. Um, we all have the third team in DNQ. We all have the fourth team in DNQ. We all have hot dog team in DNQ. We all have winners in DNQ. And then we have four different teams in <laughs> DNQ for the last <laughs> one. So you know what? We're just keeping it. We're not bothering. Um, it could go either way. It really is. Uh, it really is very, very tricky to say uh, which one it's going to be that uh, actually qualifies. But yeah, um, very, very difficult tier list to make. There's the end of it, though. Uh, thank you, everybody, who's stuck around this long. And thank you, of course, to Demarsh, Fiery, and Vordy. Vordy especially, because it was like 4 in the morning when this started or something like that. Bro. I mean, yeah, I was just, I was just awake gross, anyway because of my quick sleep schedule. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's going to be it for now. Uh, the map pool is on the spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and put qualifier schedules on the spreadsheet a little later. I have to cook dinner uh, as I have family over. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first and then put the qualifier schedules on the spreadsheet. Uh, same for the website. Those will be a little bit later, um, but you can go ahead and download qualifiers map pool. Get practicing. We'll have the screening sent out later tonight as well. And that is it for everything we needed to have happen. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And until next weekend, when we have the qualifier results. See you guys on. Good luck.